Welcome back to Two Dudes Watch Cartoons, the podcast where two dudes, that's us, watch cartoons. My name is Evan. And my name is Alex, and I'm super excited. We have what's going to be, I think, an all-time podcast here. We have a great movie that we've picked, and we have an even better guest. First off, let me introduce our guest, the one and only from Survivor 41, Xander Hastings. How are you doing, Xander? Thank you so much for coming here. How, uh, how are you, though? I'm great. Yeah, it's so fun to be here. I uh, just moved into my new place, so it's a little bit chaotic <laughs> behind the scenes, but uh, you know, it's fun. I get to chase after a tow truck today, and uh, you know, lifting furniture in like hundred to two degree mm. heat. It was of like crazy it's the, heat yeah. day in Chicago. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> the hottest but, day yeah. ever. Yeah, no, but uh, I'm finding finding the zen within. Uh, a little like in theme with the movie, so yeah, <laughs> um, yeah it's been good. Today we are going to be covering a great classic. It's from a while ago. It's from 2007. It's called Surf's Up. And before we get into any of that, though, me and Evan, we're just such big Survivor fans. We do have a couple Survivor questions. I hope that's okay. What was your favorite memory of the whole experience? Just Survivor 41. What would you say has to be creme de la creme, the best moment for you? Oh, wow. Um, I'd say definitely winning that last challenge. Uh, just the the amount of relief, you know, yeah. I felt like I had my back up against the wall all season. Uh, and to like be on edge constantly, always fighting, always working. And then to have that moment of like, oh my God, I've made it, mm-hmm. everything, all the work I've put in, it's been realized. That was just like such an incredible feeling. And I just remember feeling like such peace. I was rude. I was so excited when you won that also. So that was a good moment for me too. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and getting a hug, Jeff, of course. Oh, yeah. uh, that's what I that's wanted classic. to ask you about that. What was it like hugging Jeff Probst? That's oh, good. I mean, oh, of course, surreal, you know, that's something when you're in casting that you, you never even think like, oh, this is like, it's so surreal, it's never going to happen. And then when it actually does, it's just like, ah, yeah, I mean, that's definitely a, an all timer. I think I peaked. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. That's awesome. I, uh, I've been watching Survivor forever. And so we have a mutual friend, Jack Atkins, who was on the Circle Season 2, who is your fraternity big, which is hilarious because Evan didn't want to be my big in my fraternity. He turned me down, <laughs> even though we're best friends. We don't talk about that. But yeah. so when Jack told me you were on the season, I was like, I know who I'm rooting for. And man, you had such a wild ride. I loved watching you the whole time. Yeah, it was such a roller coaster of emotions because you, you really work your way up from the bottom throughout the whole season. And it was so incredible to watch. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. And it's it's so interesting. Like, I'm sure you understand it too, Alex, but to watch yourself back in oh, a yeah. narrative perspective, like to so see a weird. story unfold where you're a part of that story. It's it's definitely surreal, really cool, especially as an avid movie lover. Like, you know, maybe the hero's role, maybe not. Either way, to see yourself as a part of a narrative, it's pretty incredible. That's a great way to put it. As someone, I I love stories also. That's what I do here on this podcast is talk about stories. So I absolutely love that element of it because when you're out there, you're not thinking as much about that. You're just kind of doing things and playing the game and you have all this on your mind. And then to see like, oh, this is what the producers were seeing and watching. And so like you and I, we got kind of opposite experiences. Like they really showed you as like the underdog who like worked his way up. You were like the hero. And so for me, I was like the villain, the 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 scoundrel of the season. <laughs> but so, all, but it's, it's fun narratively to see how these things play out. So I totally get what you mean. And uh, that's a really astute observation. Survivor 42, did you have a moment? Were you watching? Were you just like, because to me, I thought it was interesting. All the twists and everything were the same. And so to see like what could have happened, did you have any moments like that where you're like, this was interesting? Yeah, I mean, of course, uh, kicking myself when Drea found the advantage. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, Um, I thought of you instantly. (laughs) I really, I thought I gave it a thorough search. But the thing for me is that I checked Everywhere, you know, anytime there was a tripod structure at, at every challenge, uh, always a tribal scanning and looking. So for me, it was no out of the ordinary moment. I wanted to check. It looked like the Sarah Lacina bench from yeah. uh, from season thirty four. So I, I thought I recognized it, but hers was on the side. So I was checking the sides. You could see yeah. me leaning over, trying <laughs> to scan for like 
but no, uh, I, it's one of those all time moments though, because I was, it's like a scream at the TV moment. You're just like, yeah, it's right there. I know. I know. I remember watching that episode live thinking, no, like when, when they started, uh, you know, panning over, I was like, Oh, there was something there. wasn't there. (laughs) I wanted to know what, how does it feel pulling off something like the fake idol move Mm. in a tribal probably one of the biggest moves of the season i'm sure it'll be in you know compilations best of uh in the future how does it feel to pull off a move like that it was really incredible uh i enjoyed that moment a lot you know the build-up was really nice again it's like these narratives that unfold it's it's crazy that you know there's no script and yet shakespeare still (laughs) tends to happen it's 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 really miraculous (laughs) and i just loved uh the dynamic between liana and i was so fun to watch back especially since you know, there's a lot of like uh, tension. We're both the young players gunning for each other. Uh, you know, she hates my face. <laughs> <laughs> but but I knew I knew going into the game what I wanted my perception to be. I wanted to put out the perception of like you know the young, laid back, chill surfer dude. And so I could tell that Liana thought of me as like cocky, arrogant. So I wanted to lean into that, and uh, I thought mm-hmm. that like, doubling down and having her bite it worked and it was just like an incredible payoff that that night was so surreal especially because you know the way they played it back was in a way that you could almost feel like the other players the other players were like so shocked because you know when you watch the show you're involved with all of the scheming and plotting but when you're another player in the real game you don't actually know everything that's happening so a lot of things are very shocking but this time the editors kind of made it so that the audience is also being shocked, which I thought was, you know, greatly added to the value of the uh, the moment. And I was really happy I with agree. that. I agree. It, w- it was probably one of my favorite moments of that season. I think like Evan said, it'll, it'll be talked about. That's the type of thing, like as a Survivor fan, you're just like with your friend or like in my case, like my brother and just sitting on the couch and you're like, one day I'm going to make a fake idol and I'm a fool. So like, you know what I mean? But like you had such an extra step involved there and the scheming and having to know what I also love about the knowledge is power advantage is like the irony of the name, because as soon as they end up telling someone about the name, all the power is sucked out of the advantage. And it's so, it's like you said, it's Shakespearean. Oh man, how epic is that? That both times someone told about the knowledge is power advantage that it end up the knowledge of the advantage is what ended up taking away the power. It's great. Okay. I could talk literally all day um, (laughs) about Survivor. I think it's amazing you got to be part of, like, you know, the new kickoff. Like, I'm very much, I know there's a lot of, like, whatever about uh, the the two new seasons. I've been enjoying them so much. It's so nice having Survivor back on the air, and I literally can't wait for, you know, the fall. <laughs> like, that little trailer they give us at the finale, it's not enough. I need more. Oh, yeah. I need more. <laughs> yeah, I know. I was so honored to be a part of it. I, you know, I've loved the show for so long, so it was just such an incredible opportunity for me, and I'll always be grateful for it. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. Well, I think that's all I got. Like I said, I could talk Survivor all day, but that is unfortunately not what we're here to do today. We have an important topic at hand. Evan, any last uh, thoughts on Survivor 41? No, not on Survivor, but we are going to shift from the Survivor Island to Pengu oh. Island. To oh, talk about that was good. Up. Thank you. That was good. Thank you. That was good. <laughs> I'd say definitely surfs up is probably like pre-race ritual for me. So I was cross country in high school and in college um, and competed on the national level, like a lot of really big races that, you know, super important. A year of training builds up to it. And then the night before is, you know, a very interesting night because all this work comes to like a culmination and you don't want to sleep, but you know you got to sleep. There's nervous jitters, you know, you got to figure out what to do. And so the movies for me that always got me in the right headspace were uh, Surf's Up, Interstellar. I think score really helps too, because when you're running, the score of the movie, I mean, Michael Dana's score in Surf's Up is so incredible. And, you know, I'm sure we'll get to it too, but like they're even like the swell of the music that, that just like matches perfectly with the feeling like that's what you want to feel when you're in competition you want to feel that swell and yeah surfs up just it gets me in the right mindset you know it it takes off a little bit of pressure 
but it keeps me hungry. It's like this cool duality of, you know, that competitive nature while also appreciating and realizing the bigger things in life and not Mm. making it the end all be all. Still having fun while doing it. Well said. Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. To me, you you had mentioned the few movies and I was like, okay, let's do it. And you were like, surfs up is the one. And I was like, all right. Cause we, we like having people come on here and we want you to talk about something that you're really excited about. So for me, I don't know. I have seen this movie since 2007, 2008. Like it has been a long time. So when you suggested it, I really had to be like, oh yeah. Okay. I remember penguins, they're surfing. But so I threw it on and holy shit within the first five minutes I was like, is this a mockumentary? I was like, is, is, this, uh, is, is this whole thing a mockumentary? And it was, it was brilliant. It was like a whole new level of storytelling that I had not seen in an animated film in forever. And I definitely didn't appreciate when I was a child and I saw it. I probably didn't catch all of the little humor and like the, the tiny details that go into making this such a good like mockumentary. And that was what really blew me away. And it blew me away like almost right out of the gate. I was like, whoa, this is awesome. It's, it's perfect too with, with uh, Survivor, you know, just that confessional it, style. It, <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so when true. When Alex told me Surf's Up was the movie, I was like, I had never seen it. I was like, okay, oh. I'm, I'm down. I watched the trailer. It's like mockumentary for me. I was like, that's really funny. That's really cute. Didn't watch it in, until earlier today. I was like, wait, the whole movie is this. That's incredibly brilliant. Yeah. And maybe this is getting too far ahead and, mm-hmm. and shedding light on my opinion of the movie. But it reminds me of, of IFC's uh, documentary now. If you guys have ever watched oh. that series, Bill Hader and Very uh, Fred Armisen one. parody famous documentaries. So... Um, that would be my rec. If you haven't seen that, check that out because that also perfectly skewers documentaries just like Surf's Up, this 2007 movie about penguin surfing does. I just was not expecting the two filmmakers. They're throughout the whole thing and it's it's like a sports documentary and so it's it's all about – and you can totally picture – I don't know I've ever seen an actual documentary but I can picture – the surf documentary where they're interviewing all these beach surfers and they're telling legends of Big Z and the, the gnarly swells and it encapsulated this perfectly. It was so good. But so the let's start with the voice cast. That's usually where we like to start with these things. And the voice cast did not disappoint. The lead, Cody Maverick, is played by the legendary Shia LaBeouf. That was just such a great surprise. Perfect, and perfect casting. It, Perfect yes. casting, and I spotted it instantly. I was like, that's Stanley Yelnats. I know that voice anywhere. <laughs> I think he's like the perfect embodiment of that young, eager type uh, mm. voice. It just fits so well with Cody. You know, there's a little bit of like inexperience to it, but at the same time, you can tell he's like so hungry to like prove himself. Uh, I, I thought it was great. Yeah. Yeah. Incredible performance. Just like the perfect balance of like a little bit of arrogance and like youthful hunger, like you said, Xander. You still uh, root for him. Cody Maverick comes from Antarctica, right? Yeah. Sh- Shiverpool, yeah. Shiverpool. Shiverpool. Oh my God. Fun, Not fun Liverpool. Fact. <laughs> fun fact I have Brazilian roommates. Uh, or I had uh-huh. Brazilian roommates before I moved, and they love surfs up too, but in. Portuguese, it's Frio de Janeiro is the name of the state. <laughs> <laughs> I guess for what an obscure languages. great fact that we never would have known. Uh, it's so fun that they just do like different languages. I guess for uh-huh. English, it's Shiverpool, but yeah, they, they kind of make plays on uh, the frozen homeland. <laughs> I love that. That's great. That's so good because. That's just the type of humor. Because it's a mockumentary, a lot of the humor is not like in your face like a lot of cartoons. It's very subtle. And it's so, mm-hmm. it's stuff like that that I, I appreciate. The fact that the different languages, they'll do different ones too. And we were, t- you know, Evan and I actually were talking about this just before we got on the air. This has to be around the hype when all, there's like a lot of penguin media. There was like Happy Feet. There was, what was the other one you mentioned, Evan? Now I'm forgetting. I, I, Yeah, so I think this is honestly why I probably did not get around to seeing this at the time, but March of the Penguins comes out in 2005. Madagascar, also 2005. Then Happy Feet 2006, and then Surf's Up in 2007. And that's probably why I hadn't seen it. I remember watching Happy Feet in theaters 
uh, but I missed Surf's Up, and I'm kind of mad that I did because yeah. it's probably the best of Madagascar or Happy Feet. A lot this of is penguin the best content penguin at that time. <laughs> Yeah, people were into penguins, but I will say this shaped my opinion, this whole penguin media. Anytime I went to the zoo, the first thing I had to see were those motherfucking penguins. So, <laughs> love it. But I think that this movie, while it, it is all about penguins, it also is, like, not about penguins at all. Does yeah. that make sense? Like, mm -hmm. it's not about the penguins' journey. There's some penguin facts. The males are the ones that incubate. Like, that's pretty funny when his brother's like, he doesn't know what being a real man is. It's standing here all day with these eggs. That's hard work. Like, that's pretty funny <laughs> penguin humor that, like, you wouldn't get otherwise. But it's really more about the surfing of it all and, like, the relationships. And I love that. They didn't need to be penguins. <laughs> Yeah, I think that's a huge part of why it's like a very criminally underrated movie, I feel, is because whenever mm -hmm. it's mentioned, it's like, oh, that's the Penguin movie, right? But I feel like it's, you know, again, animation is just like a medium of storytelling. And I feel like this is a good, like, lighthearted way to tell the story in a fun yeah. way that they can make jokes throughout. It appeals to a younger audience. But mm -hmm. again, it's just littered with these, like, rich jokes on life that I feel are way more deep. And one of the, my mm -hmm. favorite ones is in Shiverpool. I don't know if you guys remember it, but the, the scene where uh, Cody works sorting fish mm -hmm. and they do like a mockumentary mm -hmm. interview with the older uh, penguins of the colony. And they're talking about how, you know, it's like I worked my way up from the sardine pile to the mackerel mm -hmm. pile to the cabelta fish <laughs> pile. All hard work. And, and it's so great because I feel like a lot of you know, I feel like Shiverpool could represent any part of like mainstream society. And a lot of people are just, they're working their way up the fish piles. You yeah. know, it's like, mm -hmm. what does it all mean? What exactly is it for? Uh, you know, then they, they end up spending their whole lives just trying to get to the next rung on the ladder. But, mm -hmm. you know, they, mm -hmm. they don't leave Shiverpool ever. And I, that really connects with me as someone who goes to you know, a, a very heavy finance school, a lot of people want these internships and they want to work their way up the corporate ladder. And I, I know that's very appealing to some people, but for me, I see it as sorting fish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I totally get what you mean. The rat race of it all. It, it It's very good at showing the mundane life. And it's even shown just by like the horrible weather. And we all know those people that, you know, that just uh, are only focused on that. They never leave where they grew up and they're just focused on uh, getting the promotion at their local job. And, you know, there's a whole big world out there. And I think that is a big theme throughout this movie, even though he really does go to only a one other location. But it still was mm -hmm. like, you know, there's a world out there. And so the one thing, so his family dynamic was so interesting to me because I was absolutely gutted when his mother wouldn't come watch him surf. He was like, oh, there's a scout here. Do you want to come watch me? Like, this is important. She's like, I'm, I'm chopping fish right now, honey. And I was like, no, <laughs> not this. And so the, the scenes in Shiverpool were great because as any sort of, you know, this is where it really sets the mockumentary tone of it all. This is like season one of The Office when they were actually just like office workers. Yes. You know, he's living in Shiverpool. It's just a know-nothing kid from a know-nothing town. And we don't know that he's about to go on this big adventure, but that's why there's a documentary about him. I love it. It's great. And so it really captures the, the small town life of it all, like you said. I do want to touch on something, Xander. You said this movie is criminally underrated mm -hmm. i don't know how it's flown under the radar when it came out it made at the box office made 152 million against a budget of 100 million so financially at least Did successful well. was nominated for best animated feature in That's a good. year against ratatouille oh and you, you know, know what the, you know what i'm gonna say it this is better than ratatouille uh, those I like Ratatouille a lot. Some people. This movie was great. What? This movie was such a like a breath of fresh air from what we normally watch in this era of of string of mm -hmm. animated movies. This was unique. This was like you said there's life lessons that they don't shove down your throat. It's just very mm -hmm. natural and it was I think it was better than Ratatouille. I'll stand by it. Maybe wow. it's recency <laughs> bias, but I'm going to I'm going to stand by it. I think this has got a better cast than Ratatouille. Like, this is a star-studded <laughs> cast, too. Yeah. We got John Hedder as Chicken Joe, right? Yeah. That uh, was so Napoleon funny Dynamite. to me. Chick 
Napoleon Dynamite, which I haven't thought of Napoleon Dynamite. What a weird sensation of a movie that just Mm -hmm. blew up out of nowhere. But so blew this guy to stardom, and he was perfect for this role. He was spot on. Here's what I'll say. I I would watch this again before I watch Ratatouille again. I don't know. Hey. Head to head, I don't know who wins, but I'd watch this one again. Because I really thoroughly enjoyed it that much. Yeah. I was going to say, I think a lot of people, too, think that it's, like, a very surf-centered movie. And, like, for someone like me to recommend this movie, it's like, oh, he's got the long hair. He's probably a surfer. Like, that makes sense. But I actually don't surf. And yet I can still appreciate everything that this movie is saying and, like, really relate to it. I have never surfed a day in my life, but I have never wanted to surf more than after watching this movie. And I'll be honest, after watching this movie, I think I could do it. I think if I carved my own board, I could figure it out and do it. I really do. Long, smooth strokes. That was my favorite part. I know we're really jumping around, but that was like the part where I really was like, this movie went from good to all time, in my opinion, because I was like really enjoying it. But the whole part of the patience and the long, smooth strokes and going with and like, that oh, I'm getting goosebumps just talking about it. We're skipping around kid. too much. Oh, it, it's a great way to put it, Evan. It totally yeah. was. Yeah. It was great. And so Shia LaBeouf's character lives in a podunk town, and there's a recruiter, a surf recruiter. I love that there's just a recruiter in this. And he comes and he's looking for the best surfer in town. Unfortunately, though, there's no waves. How? pissed would you be (laughs) if you just got bum out of luck because there was no waves and he was like bye i'd be upset so cody is the best surfer in his hometown correct yeah yeah he may be the but doesn't he kind of flub in front of the in front of the (laughs) well i think i I think that's because he's the only surfer in town like he's the best (laughs) surfer but he's also one of the only so i got you i I, got you i think that's more of what it is is like he thought he was hot shit I think that's part mm-hmm. of it. As he goes to the surf contest, he's like, "No one's better than me," and he's like, "Oh, I have a lot to learn." There's there's some humility that was involved. Like he got humbled pretty hard. So I think that's a big part of the story. Is like he he was like, "Oh, you know, if I can make it in Shiverpool, I can make it anywhere." And he is quick. We learns there's a much better surfer out there, <laughs> multiple. But he who is this little bird? I'm not seeing it on the cast, but. This little right. bird was so great. It ran around and it was a star, to my, in my opinion. No, I, I love like the, you know, he's like, I'm on so much migraine medication. <laughs> like he hates it. He's stressed out. So on the fritz. And it's, it's cool that the, in this universe, there are different kinds of birds. It's like they're very, very much like expanding the bird themed universe. I it mean, was it, only birds except for Reggie. Yes. <laughs> Reggie's yeah. the only non bird. I took note of it because I was like, oh, these are all birds except Reggie. Reggie is a hilarious character. Reggie was also played by freaking James Woods. I don't know what, like, that was amazing to me. And ready for this? I recognize James Woods' voice from Family Guy, of all things. Oh James God. Wood. He's on a few episodes of Family Guy, and he plays J- himself, James Woods, like a very uh, like uh, extreme version of himself where he like will kidnap <laughs> Peter and whatnot. But so I instantly, because I knew that James Woods actually played his own voice, I was like, I recognize that. I was like, I know that voice. That's James Woods. <laughs> Which that one felt weird to me that I knew it right out of the gate. James Woods in uh, Hercules is, I, I think, like his peak performance is Hades. Yeah. So I recognized it instantly as Hades. I, he, the voice is just so iconic. It's so distinct. And as a villain, too, just he's, perfect. And he's a different kind of villain in this. He's a documentary villain. That's what's also great is this movie is not over the top. It's not like a – he's just a greedy – self-consumed surf promoter and he's all in it for himself and it's very realistic and he's exploiting these surfers which like i said i've never seen a surf documentary but i guarantee there's people out there taking advantage of surfers because they're just like beach bums who are like yeah man i'm just in it for the waves you could take the money bro (laughs) you know what i mean like i guarantee there's people out there like that so 
Reggie was great, but so uh, yeah, that's where that's where Shia LaBeouf's character Cody goes is to Reggie's island. Well, it's where Reggie's uh, contest is. I guess it's not his whole mm-hmm. island, but he's got this little cove where they do uh, the Big Z Memorial Surf Contest. So we haven't talked about Big Z, but let's. Uh, do, who wants to set up what uh, Big Z means in this uh, movie? I'm trying to remember uh, the voice actor's name so the voice actor is um, jeff, bridges. jeff bridges yeah right love mm-hmm. jeff bridges too mm-hmm. big z jeff bridges perfect casting again uh, i think that he's like you know really brings that wisdom of the miyagi yeah. type mentor and in this universe big z is the legendary figure of surfing he's the one who really changed the game made it as popular as it is, it was regarded as like very wise, very legendary, uh, but had a fall from grace. He a went surf up against, accident. Yeah, yeah, went up against Tank Evans, surf accident, died, and now they're ra- they're surfing for the Big Z Memorial Contest in in his honor. Yeah, the best part about Big Z is so it's when Cody is recanting. He so I love he goes they he goes they didn't even have the ocean before Big Z. They made the ocean for him because they needed bigger waves. I was like, what a great line that like a a kid would <laughs> believe something like that. Like so, and, but the best part about Big Z is he will go in the swell. I'm not sure he goes in the curve of the wave, looking like he's being undertaken, and then he just comes out and he slowly turns around. And he bows to the wave. And it is so badass. I I can't explain it, but that was the moment where I was like, yeah, I want to be a surfer. That was so cool. (laughs) The respect he showed to that wave. He was like, thank you. Loved it. That was just like so poetic. And that's what I'm talking about. Okay, we haven't discussed it all. The animation in this movie, it is computer generated, but it is top fucking notch yeah this is a beautiful movie the penguins look so very realistic there's water that gets on the camera lens because it's a mockumentary quite often and it is the most beautiful goddamn touch i've ever seen and it looks just like real water sorry had to do it animation 11 out of 10 in this movie for being computer generated so sony pictures who made surfs up they invented this technique or this technology called Handycam where they would have a real life person, like a real camera operator, who would control where the, the virtual camera is going for these shots. So you can get kind of that handheld motion of... It's Yeah. So it and looks like a real documentary. It. And they wow. nailed it. Cool. It does, like, it's not just like your classic, like, zoom in, zoom out. Like, it literally looks like someone is walking closer or walking away. Like, it's really well done. I, I noticed all these small things because I was like, wow, a mockumentary is so, you know, our podcast, we love covering unique and different things. And this fits the bill perfectly because it just tiny things like that, Evan, like the camera work of it, I noticed. And I was like, this is really good. Like this looks like it is a documentary in an animated universe. How amazing mm-hmm. is that? When they, uh, wow. when uh, Lonnie runs Cody to Geek or Big Z in the, in the jungle, the way the camera follows them, it's, you know, it's shaking, it's handheld. And you can almost picture like a boom operator running behind them. Like, <laughs> hey, wait up. Like, that's how enthralling the documentary feel of this movie is. All right. Uh, back to the plot, though. So Cody arrives at the island. What's a, What did you call it again, Evan? You had the name down. Perfect. Pangu P- Pago- Island. Pangu Island. And there's a ton of different penguins here from all over the world. And one chicken. <laughs> and so why don't you uh, set up? So the first plot point here is obviously this uh, surf c- contest with Tank that... Uh, oh, tell us a little bit about what happens with uh, Cody and Tank in the surf contest, Xander. It means so much to Cody because he's a huge Big Z fan. Big Z is Cody's hero. He looks up to him. Uh, there's also a scene, love, this, love the joke where he says, you know, and he walked right up to me. <laughs> and he's pushing his way through the crowd. He ran right up to him and he goes, he walked right up to me. He could have walked up to any kid. Be- great touch. I feel like that's so realistic. I feel like that's such a real thing. Any kid who's starstruck with their hero would feel. He wears the Big Z necklace all the time, obviously reveres Big Z. And so the competition means a lot for him, uh, you know, to obviously live up to his hero's standards. And he, 
I think, uh, Evan, you noted it. There's some arrogance with Cody's character. And I think that's a really interesting way to take the story because Cody is so relatable and he's very much our hero, but he's a flawed hero. They mm-hmm. show a lot of his like cockiness, his overconfidence, his arrogance. And I think that really manifests in this first showdown with uh, Tank Evans where, you know, he's a challenging tank, someone who's obviously like way better than him. He wasn't that great on his own island because he's the only surfer, but he seems to think that he's this great surfer and he's going to take on the tank. And I, I love the way that they, yeah. they splice. Uh, it's, it's honestly like they, you could totally imagine on Survivor or the Circle saying you're going to want to watch it over and over and over again. And then they splice the clip to kind of like poke fun. At, at, it's so real. I feel goes, like you're going to want the camera rolling the first time I hit that <laughs> island. It's so great because you're right. It's the editors showing it's the there's the cameramen who are making it. Oh, it's so good. I can't even finish my sentence. And I think that is literally like. One of the great things about this is that is such a documentary move, is they take something he said earlier about how it was going to go and intersplice it, and it went totally different. Because he didn't even, like, ride the wave at all. He literally (laughs) flopped so hard, instantly. And he injures himself. And I think that's, like, what drives the plot. And I was shocked because, you know, we're maybe, like, 35 minutes into the movie i was like wow i was like a lot's happened in the first so i was like where is this going i do not remember but so he not injures a lot himself. of surfing has happened yet <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah not a lot of good surfing from him um yeah. we didn't uh so we this is where we meet zoe de chanel's character who mm-hmm. is um the lifeguard of the beach she's another type of penguin and she rescues our, our main character i think it's funny that uh cody within seconds of seeing her goes I'm in love, bro. Like, that was just so classic 17-year-old. And he literally was. He was in love the rest of the movie, too. Like, and they spent no time developing it. He literally, the first thing he says about Zoe Deschanel's character, I'm in love, bro. It was great. Yeah. Zoe Deschanel is Big Z's niece, we find out. Now, is this Lonnie, niece, yeah. niece, or, like, colloquial, like, you know, that's She said, uncle. he's the only family I have. Oh, so I think nice. it's niece, niece. Yeah, Mm -hmm. but so we don't know it's Big Z yet. To us, he's just known as Geek. This was a big gag of the movie. I like knew it was coming, but I still, you know, I like to act surprised when, Mm because I had seen the movie. I remember I was like, no, I know Big Z's in it. So I, but I was like, I couldn't, once I met him, I was like, this is Big Z. So I was like, yeah, but I always, I always play along with the surprise. I love it. But so this was, it was a good one. I think they actually hit it pretty well. But so yeah, Lonnie takes him to uh, Big Z, who is in a shack. He's been hiding ever since his surf accident where he died and now i need to ask you guys one important question do you think the clams were a metaphor for booze oh i think that's nail on the head i think that's perfect i mean they really with just the penguin form they create a character if you notice the prints on the edge of his black feathers creates a hawaiian design so he's got a hawaiian shirt on his his hair is overgrown he's got stain right they like totally create a character with just the penguin form and i think that booze is perfectly in line with what they're trying to go for yeah i think he was a washed up El, a, a shellaholic if you will <laughs> like because he was anytime Lonnie he's like bring more shells bring more clams like that was all and I was like okay I'm trying to relate this to and this is what was so great is it took like such a real and raw story and it was like we're gonna make it a kids movie <laughs> like that's what I love that sort of shit and so I to me I was like yeah I think this guy's kind of down on his luck living in the woods kind of alone just kind of drinking himself to whatever and so that's that's why his niece is so happy when uh, after Cody is healed, him and Big Z, they don't get along at all. I think it's great that for very little of the movie, they don't get along, which is so realistic, but they just see something in the other one that they like. It's, it's almost like they're too similar that they butt heads. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I just love that dynamic because that's so goddamn realistic. You know, what I mean? have you ever met someone and you're just so much like them? And when you spend too much time with them, you just bicker and you're like, we're best friends. Like, why are we fighting all the time? Like, <laughs> that's what this reminded me of. And it was so great. It was perfect. Brizard, you were you were this close to, to nailing that pun. It, it's shellcoholic. You gotta. Ah, <laughs> so close. I'm so close. My bad. <laughs> I was right there. Um, it was the tip of my tongue. Yeah. 
I think they're also both so guarded in the same way. Like you can tell that like Geek is very guarded in the sense that he doesn't want to let off that he's alone. But when Cody goes away, he's clearly like he doesn't much have much to do out in the shack. He wants something in his life. You can tell that like deep down inside, he wants to get back to the way that he was and like find that spark again. So he goes to Cody and he's talking about building the board from the wood that he's sitting on. So clearly like even though he's trying to pretend like, oh, I don't care about this guy. I'll throw a pineapple at his head. Oh, I don't care. Like no cares in the world. I just want my clams. Mm -hmm. He really does. He's looking for connection. He's like trying to reach out. He is. He's having a hard time admitting that he's looking for connection. He's having a hard time saying I'm lonely, which is like such a real um, thing. Yeah, Mm -hmm. it's great. It's really good. And so the two meet and they find the finest piece of wood they could and he's like, you know, you can make a great surfboard out of this. And so they, uh, it ends up through a series of misfortunate events rolling down to this private cove that I noted has perfect waves all the time. It was amazing. <laughs> I was like, it's got to be something with the with the with the rock structure of this cove. Look at these swells. I was like, I'm a surf bro now. I was like, I'm noticing all the waves. I was like, I gotta hit them. <laughs> but so they go, and this is like I said, this was the part of the movie that really took me from like I was like, oh, I'm enjoying this to like I was like. This is so good. And it's just the dynamic between the two. This is where Cody finds out that this guy he's been hanging out with is Big Z. And there's a bit of nostalgia, melancholy from like Big Z coming back to his old stomping ground of of his like surf shack. And I almost said, I love that they got that caught on camera. Like it's a real documentary. I was like, I love they caught that on camera. But (laughs) it's just, it was so, it was a great scene in my opinion because it was one of those scenes where not a lot was said, but I got a lot from it still, which those are my fave. Yeah, Yeah. he just picks up the ukulele, strums a couple chords and it's like instantly you're like, oh man, you just start feeling for him. Like clearly there's so much there, but it's all unspoken. Yes, Mm -hmm. yep. Mm-hmm. It's that well scene said. in any sports documentary when when they like wistfully look around the empty locker room, touch the top <laughs> of the archway, <laughs> and wipe some <laughs> dust off the shelf, off the trophy shelf. The way they do this as a sports documentary, I am still not over it. There's it, clips from no, ESPN, it's so but it's like yeah. S P E N. It's like it's it's great. It's so good. There's so many tiny details that make this like a great mockumentary because. It's like, there's so many things. It didn't need penguins. It didn't need the mockumentary. They just added that to make it next level. That level of comedy, that level of like uh, satire. So Mm -hmm. I I just, I really appreciate it. But at its core, there's this like great message with, like you said, just real deep life lessons. And so this is where we start getting some of those life lessons. And so the surfboard making scene was the best because so he's like, well, he's like, I painted the outline for you. Here you go. And the first thing he does is start like he went to town right away on the one I was like oh my god so funny and the guy's like whoa, 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 whoa. and then he does it for him and he gets like lost in it and I love that moment where he got lost in it and he's just doing it himself over and over and over well, it's so true to reality too that like that over eagerness that wanting mm. it so bad I feel like it's so easy to get caught up in like I want it now that instant gratification it's such a young like an intrinsically yes. young thing that Cody just wants to like give me the shell like I want to do it like let mm-hmm. me do it like I'll just start going at it but Z like that's where you want to be just like totally lost in it everything mm-hmm. else fades away mm-hmm. love how his voice just trails <laughs> off yeah and they take their time on that scene too and it really adds to it yeah they didn't sugarcoat it they didn't do they did do a time lapse but they still made the scene very long which was good and, and and good for the tone of it and then i just love again even after he has like given up to him cody's about to do it <laughs> Jeff Bridges goes, no, you're doing it wrong. Like, as soon as he touched the wood, it was, like, a really good joke. Like, as soon as he made contact with the wood, he's like, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. I was like, that's so classic because they both have this, like, control issue type deal, too, where it... That's why, oh my God, I'm just now realizing, like, that's why Big Z had to quit. He was like, if I'm not in control of it anymore, like, what's the point? Oh my God, it's, oh, it's that loss of control. And so he's trying to teach Cody, you know what? Sometimes you have to let go. Sometimes you you can't be in control of everything. You have to have fun with it. And at the same time, he's like, dang, I need to follow my own advice too. Oh my God. 
That's beautiful. Sorry, I just thought of it. They're really great foils for each other, and, and they balance mm. each other out. Cody is this overeager kid who's a little maybe too fired up, and Zeke is this person who doesn't have enough of that passion in that fire, and they really bring each other to like a nice, happy medium. I love the scene where they're carving the board because... Zeke is trying to pretend that he doesn't care any, anymore. But as soon as mm. Cody touches it, he's like, no, 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 you're doing it wrong. He's still yeah. this perfectionist, yeah. a master of his craft, a surfing legend. And like he's, you know, his, his behavior betrays him a little bit. I just love that touch of characterization there. Well said. You know what? I should have put this at the beginning, but this movie is free on the Tubi app. You can download the Tubi app for free and watch Surf's Up. That was the only place I was able to find it. But if you've made it this far into the podcast and haven't watched it in years or whatever, please go watch this movie again. Do yourself... uh, Because even me just talking about it right now, I'm like... This is such a good movie. Like, I'm definitely going to watch this with Nikki. I didn't I didn't have time to watch it with her, but I'm going to show it to her before this podcast comes out because I want to watch it again now. Okay, so the other thing that we missed, and I'm jumping back to the beginning here, is the first song is Green Day? Did that not just... That took me to a world of being in middle school again and just feeling similar emotions. Me, I was playing tennis back then, so like I was like, I'm gonna be the very best. The no one ever like not to sound like Ash Ketchum. Oh my god, I just quoted Pokemon. Okay, um, I was, but like, so I felt a lot of these same emotions, and so Green Day took me back to that time, and I thought that was an amazing touch. They did two different Green Day songs. What a treat. Was it was it Green Day or was it Incubus? I'm not seeing Green Day on this. There was an Incubus song too okay regardless yeah drive drive the first one is incubus but it's like it's so perfectly that like 90s angst like i want to get out of my hometown like Mm -hmm. i'm too good for this (laughs) and it really it's like the perfect balance of like yeah yes the passion's there and that's a good thing but again it's arrogance it's over eager yeah yeah that's that angst xander my question to you is was survivor your I want to get out of this town and find that big adventure. Oh. Yeah, I definitely, it's, it's funny. Cause you know, a lot of like my closest friends and I, we love this movie. This is like <laughs> top tier lore for like <laughs> Xander's life. And so, you know, before going out there, I was, it was very much trying to channel that Cody Maverick energy. You should have stayed in Antarctica kid. Like hearing the, hearing the voices. Oh love my that. God. This and is I, I, Pengu uh, Island. You're on yeah. your way to, you're riding the whale. You're literally on one of those boats and that's you on the whale going to Pengu yeah. Island. And oh, so, we didn't even talk about like fighting for the whale. Like that seems so powerful. You know what? It really and, is. And we skipped over it. Go ahead. No, tell us. Cause it's a great introduction. To yeah. Him. Yeah. Oh, when he's like, uh, when he's rejected by the scout, he just refuses to accept no for an answer. Like, this is what he wants to do with his life. I think the quote is like, I've never won anything my whole life. For once, I just want to feel like a winner. And he just chases after it. And the the score, oh my God, is so good. I love the music in it. Like, with every jump, like, you can hear the, uh, I don't know what instrument it is. but There's like a swell. I I can picture what you're saying. The music with it was really... The, oh, wow. That scene is great because it really shows like even though Cody has that, you know, bit of an arrogant side, he has that drive and that determination that that I'm not taking no for an answer. And he like even after falling off the whale several times, he like I was almost like this is comedically how many times he has fallen off this whale. But he fi- he finally gets on and he's like, I'm not taking no for an answer. And I think that was really uh, just symbolic of like, you know, his persistence and determination is what really ends up carrying him throughout the whole movie. Yeah. And I think it's so interesting from like a study of like what makes a good protagonist. It's almost that like his fight and passion completely overrides the fact that he's a flawed character. Like if he were just arrogant and just cocky, I wouldn't like him as a character. And yet I feel so connected and so rooting for him because he just refuses to give up. He refuses. And you can just tell he wants it so much. He's got a dream. It's amazing that they're able to like convey that over an animated form. His arc is really interesting because I feel like a typical protagonist journey. It's like the nerdy kid wants to fit in, gets popular, learns life lessons because his old friends ditch him. And then, you know, that's where the growth happens is like they make that realization. But really, Cody starts 
from unlikable almost <laughs> and and really just <laughs> is on mostly an upward trajectory through the whole thing he's just like just growing the whole time constant um, growth and then he he finds mm-hmm. like a found family at the end too he he becomes popular he goes mm-hmm. from like unpopular to popular yeah you're right it's only ups for cody maverick story wise yeah. and maybe you know what that's what makes a good documentary no, I'm just kidding, because there's plenty of documentaries where that's not the story at all. <laughs> I, instantly, as soon as I said it, I was like, I can think of several. That's not the case. <laughs> there are some downs, too. He does. He gives up quite a bit. You know, when he, when, when yes. Big Z comes to tell him, like, let's make the board from Cowood, he's like, nah. He's like, I'm telling you we can make, like, a great board, and you're saying, nah. You know, and he also doesn't want to face the people at the beach. He's scared because he's just made a fool of himself at his lowest so point when, he, when mm-hmm. he wiped out. And then I think the scene that really gets me, and again, like, the soundtrack is just perfect. Pocket full of stars when he's had the argument with Z, and he's talking, the way he talks to the camera, saying, like, you know, I've never, like, had a father in my life, but he, he cuts off. He doesn't mm. he doesn't exactly say it. And it's mentioned in the beginning, too, when he talks about his dad, and he's, he's wiping off his board. He said, like, no, nah, it didn't affect me. Like, you know, his, his father dying, Ooh. he's like, no. Nah, didn't affect me, man. He's just so guarded trying to pretend that he doesn't need that father figure and that he doesn't need anybody. He's just going to go off and show the world. That moment you're talking about is great because it's such a documentary moment where they probably asked him something about Big Z. And his response was, I lost my father when I was a kid. And they were like, what does that have to do with this? And he was like, nothing. <laughs> Like, it was great because he was yeah. like, oh, dang, I didn't realize I viewed him as such a father figure till that moment where he's like, dang, I've been comparing him to my father. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. it's so good because that's such, like I said, just so typical to documentary. Like, they ask him a question and it'll get him rolling. Like, I had that in the circle, too. They would ask me one thing sometime and I would just go on, like, the longest rant. And I'd be like, <laughs> I connected a lot of dots here today. Like, And I'm sure that's kind of like what he did, too. But obviously with, like, more of a life, like, sort of connection, uh-huh. not a game thing but so ah this is so great though so when they like i said they just butt heads the whole time and it's about them trying to like reconcile and come together and like there's this balance of like cody wanting to win and be the best and be competitive and then there's big z who's like no no man there's more to it there's more to doing it than just doing it for the win for the trophy that's not why you should be doing it and i think that is such an underrated lesson for young people, because I feel like no matter how many times you tell like a young person that they're just like, that's corny. I want to win like, blah, blah, blah. like, <laughs> but it, you need to do it for the enjoyment of it. You got to win, lose, whatever. You're doing it for the fun. And, you know, yeah, you want to win. You want to be competitive, but like you can't let that overtake. There's at one point where he's like, he's like, this is supposed to be fun. And Big Z was like, yeah, it's supposed to be. And it's like so great because it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Cody, you're missing it, right? It's right in front of you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he's got the little action figure with the wave, it's like <laughs> yes! it's just such a stupid test. But Cody, you know, Big Z's got the little action. He's like, woo. Yeah. And Cody doesn't get it. He's like, and Cody's you know, doing it all technical. Ooh, and he's like, ooh, mm-hmm. ooh, no joy fail it's it's so great it's i i really do and i think that like i agree it's it's such an underrated premise in movies it's like i feel like the the stereotypical concept is there's a big championship you have to prepare for it you're nervous you want to train and that's like everything's riding on it and then of course our protagonist wins and that's like the whole arc is like getting to the point where you can win but in this story it's he doesn't Yes, we yes. didn't even talk about that yet. He doesn't win. That's so important for the story. I'm just mm-hmm. now connecting. But it's it's just amazing to show that he does win in a sense. You know, he's found his place. Yeah. He's found his people. His he's purpose. found like meaning. Yes, exactly. And it's it's great because Big Z was a winner. And he showed Cody that no matter how many times you win, happiness is something that's only ever going to be temporary. You're always going to be craving more and more, Mm. whereas purpose and belonging, that's something that's going to last forever. Oh, oh, you just gave me goosebumps. That was beautiful. Tagline it. There's the movie. (laughs) That's what makes this such a great film is there's humor. There's like small attention to small detail. There's like a great story, but just that life lesson and that moral. Oh, so good. 
Yeah. yeah. We skipped around a lot, but where are we at plot-wise, Evan? Do you know? I think we got to head back into the surf competition. Before we do, we got to touch on the villain, the antagonist oh, yes. of the movie, Tank the Shredder Evans, voiced by... <laughs> Diedrich Bader. At first, I thought it was Will Arnett. I was gonna. Lie. I, thought I thought I had nailed it to a T. Thought it was Will Arnett. I didn't look at the voice cast until after. I was like, "That's got to be Will Arnett." But and Diedrich <laughs> he, Bader, he does a another voice, voice actor I love. Yeah, he. Um, what he's voice, a popular voice actor. What else does he do? He's probably most recognizable from the Drew Carey sitcom from like the early '90s. Oh, but he okay. also voiced Batman in Batman: The Brave and the Bold. I uh, knew. Short-lived okay cartoon network series that is cartoon. hilarious and awesome it's really good it's t- it's underrated it's very short but it he just like goes on an adventure with a different dc hero every week it's great it's um, very lighthearted. but fan. i knew the voice sound familiar yeah and mm-hmm. he was great at this role and so evan pointed this out to me is this is a famous tiktok sound tank is like let me show you my ladies he's like this is brianna everyone knows why she's <laughs> called brianna and they're like no why is she called brianna and he goes yeah it's a long story <laughs> story perfect <laughs> villain vibes someone who's like you know why she's called that and you're like no why and they're like you wouldn't understand like what a douche thing to do <laughs> oh man i mean all of his confessionals are so great he's like, they are. such a character my, my favorite one is when they're asking everybody what is winning me and, and tank's answer is no i get you what is winning without the losers <laughs> <laughs> He goes, no, no, yeah, I get you. <laughs> That's great. There's one, too, where they're like, you don't ever want to, like, get in the water and maybe, like, teach the kids and, like, surf with them. And it's a clip of him running over children while surfing. And he's like, no, why would I want to do that? <laughs> like, literally, like, couldn't <laughs> comprehend why that would ever be worth his time. It's 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 Uh-oh. good. They make him irredeemable, but also still kind of funny. Like, you, you still can mm-hmm. laugh at him. You love to hate him. Yeah. So in the surf competition... Uh, the final round is, which I thought was a lovely thing. It, it wasn't just head to head, Cody versus Tank. Yeah, it was Cody, his new best bud, Chicken Joe. We haven't, yeah, Chicken Joe. We Chicken have not Joe. touched on Chicken Joe enough. Chicken Joe is on a a, a B mission. The camera crew is following Chicken Joe <laughs> yeah. throughout the forest as he looks through for Cody, which they like cross paths at one point. So Chicken Joe's heading the complete wrong direction, and he just like. Almost gets eaten a la Jack Sparrow from Pirates mm-hmm. of the Caribbean. Gets uh, taken, almost eaten, b- becomes the leader of this tribe of Pengu penguins. It's like really crazy I- B story. But the whole time, Chicken Joe is just stoned as shit or something. He plays that role perfectly. I loved it. I may have missed it. Does the whole B plot line resolve at the end? Does it come into play at any point in the conclusion of the whole tribe of cannibalistic Penguins. Well, they were rooting for them in the surf contest, so Chicken okay. Joe like okay. really in a way. Be- befriended them. Yeah, he became their leader or something. <laughs> it's so great. It's Napoleon Dynamite. It's so great. It's that poor guy will never be called anything besides Napoleon Dynamite. I feel bad for him in a way, but like, That's what okay. a legacy. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so it's the three of them in the final. That is great. It's not, you know, they're the only ones who qualified for this final run. And we get Tank just being a classic dick, as he always is. And he falls. So it is technically between Cody and Joe. But then this part I don't understand. Like, uh, one of my two complaints. Oh, my other one's a good one. Remind me before we get off. But so Tank is out of the contest. He fell. But then all of a sudden he drops back in just to screw these two up. That shouldn't be allowed. Come on, you're out, bro. There's got to be some sort of rule. But anyways, he tries to overtake the two and Cody does the selfless thing and he lets Chicken Joe have the win. And he says, I'll take Tank into the the deadly rock where uh, Big Z was supposedly died. This whole surf contest, this final scene, if I can't watch the movie before a race, it's this scene that I'm going to. Love the way that it starts. There are a lot of parallels between the final competition and the one where he falls, except it's a little bit of a reversal. So in the one where Cody makes a fool of himself, Cody's the one antagonizing Tank, calling him Stank, you're a loser, like you'll never be as good as him. But in this one, Tank's the one talking shit. And he's saying, you're going down. I'm going to make you wish you were never hatched. And Cody says nothing. (laughs) Cody didn't say, and he didn't respond, and I love that. Cody's focused. 
he's in the zone. He's got it. He's he's not so caught up in trying to like talk the talk. He's gonna walk the walk, and I yeah. love that energy. Yeah. Uh, and just that that scene of him getting up on the board when he's so nervous, and all you can hear is like, you know, the breathing and his heart beating. And then they have the flashes of all the people who have doubted him. Yes. You should have stayed in Antarctica, kid. You're his like, when parents, are you going to get a life? His brother. You are nobody. Yes. And then the swell, when he, you hear him just like breathing heavily and then his training comes into play, he lets go and it's just that last breath and it opens up. Oh my God. that That's like one of my favorite scenes of any animated movie. It's just yeah. – it really gets me right at the heart to see like him come out on top of the wave and you never even notice the breathing heavily, but like that's something so intrinsic with whatever competition you're going into. Yeah. It's something you forget that's even there, but that is that background noise of hearing yourself breathing and hoping that it's going to be okay. Pure adrenaline. No, you're so right. And it, just before that, all anyone's doing is you're just getting ready. You're getting yourself psyched. And then it, you're right. That's the background music to it all is that deep breathing. And so great point. I love that. You are so right about how they nail the drama of this scene because it's it's not just like I need to win the big surf contest. That's like not what this is about. And you know that going in. You know that it's more so about him, in a sense, regaining his honor. Not to be cheesy, but like he's like, I'm in this to prove I don't have anything to prove. And he nails it with just the, the sacrifice of himself, but he, he's still able to compete and take it seriously while having fun and not letting his competitive side turn him into something he doesn't want to be. As someone who never really did sports, Xander, you speak beautifully about it. Can't relate. Can't relate. <laughs> <laughs> but the way you describe it is, uh, is, is, is paints a beautiful picture for me. <laughs> um, no, that was very true. What you said uh, really... Um, really nails that feeling and I think this movie is able to capture that so I can totally totally see why this is something that you would uh watch to pump you up I gotta be honest my pump up video is way more embarrassing like this is a good one <laughs> mine is uh do you know mine, Evan? Yeah, mine is a video of Puff Daddy, like right after he makes like a huge deal. It's like 14 seconds long. And he's like, he's like, yeah, well, can't you buy, like, I don't even know the words exactly, but it's just him and he hangs up the phone and he's like, yeah, he's like, I did it. And then he's like, what's next? What's next? I could do whatever. Like, tell me what's next. What can't you do? And I'm like, yes, that's the energy I need. So like, this is a much more like heartfelt pump up video <laughs> that probably gets you in a better mind space than my pump up video. <laughs> This feels like a good spot. I'm going to get into my other complaint. It was nitpicky, but big at the same time. All right. Zoe Deschanel's penguin is the niece of Big Z. And as we mentioned, Big Z has been a recluse for about 10 years. He's been in there. And we find out through a series of loving, flirty conversations between Shia LaBeouf and Zoe Deschanel that she's like, yeah, I've been trying to get him out of that shack like every day for the past 10 years. And she's like, you come along one day and you're able to get him down to the beach? Like, I'm jealous. Like, that's cool. And so I really wanted a nice wrap-up moment for the, for the two family members. Mm -hmm. And we really got kind of shafted on that. Big Z literally pulls her aside for one moment and goes, hey, thanks for everything. And that's all, that's like the only thing they address, like, once he's come out of his shack. He's not like, you know, you were my rock these last 10 years, like, you kept me sick. Like, no! He was just like, thanks for everything. I was like, ah, oh, you can do better, Big Z. But, it, you know, I get it's more about the relationship between Cody and him, but I was just like, that's your family. <laughs> it was, it was his... Dipping his toes into acknowledging how she's been there. Uh, saying You're right. okay. a million words with just a few. Okay. You'd like that. Next time you do a lot for me, I'm just going to pull you aside and be like, hey, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> you know all you do for the podcast every single day? Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> no. Great pick. I, I, we're, I know we're close to the end here, but I just got to say again. 10 out of 10 pick, Xander, because I, I won't lie, I, I didn't doubt it at first, but I was confused. I was like, oh, surf's up. Wow, okay. I, I don't remember. Oh, and ready for this? The trailer? Cause, so I watched the trailer when you told me. I was like, yeah, I got to remind myself. The trailer at the end goes, a true story. <laughs> what? <laughs> 
How can you make that claim? How on earth can you make that claim? In a, a, I was mind blown that that was in the trailer. Doesn't Fargo do that? They you might. Watch Fargo? You know what? Fargo, yeah, I think it does. I think it says based on a true story, and I don't know what it is. It's very much not. Classic, classic. <laughs> okay, plot wise, you know, we get a nice wrap up after Chicken Joe is the winner. I love Chicken Joe. He's getting interviewed, and they're like, How does it feel to win that the first, first person to dethrone in, in nine years, whatever? And he's like, Wait, I won? I know it's a tiny moment. It's supposed to be a joke, but it is also such a reminder of the theme of the movie is it's like, Win or lose, you know, they both still had the time of their life. That's what's important yeah. to them. Yeah. And then the trophy breaks, too. They it's don't like even care. Of this thing that everybody built up, Cody built up to be the one thing that was going to make him happy, it mm -hmm. was just material, you know? It's it's like Reggie is materialism. He's the surfboards and the contest and the, the show. I'm going to make you a star, kid, that kind of thing. And then for Joe to say, like, I won, like, not even know and yeah. to just, like, kind of belittle the competition yeah. in that way. It's pretty great. It really shatters that expectation and that stereotype of competition being everything. Yeah. So yeah. do they have so to change the, the name of the competition now since Z It's not the alive. big Z memorial. <laughs> yeah, they definitely do. <laughs> That's great. That's too funny. Yeah, they probably just call it the big Z. Uh, I don't even know what you would call it. I couldn't think of an opposite word of memoriam. Um, but... I think that as we're talking about the themes and everything, what a great lesson to hear from two people who were on reality shows and came like just shy of actually winning. But I think we both left our experiences being like, I am better for this as a whole, not mm -hmm. to put words into your mouth, but like, I love my experience. Wouldn't change a goddamn thing. This resonated with me on a level that I'm not even, I didn't even understand till you and I are just talking about it right now. I feel like I was ready going into Survivor, having it be similar to Cody, like this thing that I've just built up in my mind is the pinnacle of what I want to achieve and what I want to do. And I know that I'm going to fight. I'm going to put everything into it, just like he does chasing after the whale. But knowing at the same time that you have to take those moments to just appreciate where you are in life. It's an honor to be here, that it's an incredible experience and like, you know, life is so beautiful and that no matter what happens, you're gaining, you know, yeah. you're gaining experience and wisdom. And in the end, would it have really made a huge difference? Like It's just the win isn't actually the win. Yeah. No, I get. I totally agree. And one thing that I think with, and you know, I'm sure everyone that goes on Survivor has fun and loves the experience. But one thing the edit really got across with you as well is how much you were having fun and enjoying it out there. And I think that's got to be so cool to watch mm -hmm. back for yourself because you obviously were having the time of your life. And so to see and hear that, that's got to be cool because, man, that is so the message of this movie. Holy shit. I totally get why this has been your favorite movie for so long. Love it. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> I, I think that really manifested for the crossbear challenge where you're hanging on the oh. the uncomfortably numb. You know, sitting up there, I I knew walking into the challenge that I had the biggest smile on my face because that was I had trained for so many challenges and I was like, that's the one where it's just pure. How who bad. can outlast the pain? Who can just tell their body, no, you're not feeling it. You're not dropping down and like really just uh, endure. And I, I love endurance. I'm not coordinated. I'm not like, you know, <laughs> I'm no all-star in sports, but I, I do have endurance on my side. That's like the one thing that I've got is when I feel the pain, I can just, you know, tell my body it's not real. It's just the neurons sending signals up to my brain, but there's no real physical pain. It's in my head. I can, I can be better than that. Right. And, and in that, in that competition, I was in that challenge. I was just I could not stop smiling. I was having so much fun because like, yeah. you know, when else am I in my life? Am I ever going to get to be up on a, you know, a big post yeah. in front of Jeff Probst and a bunch of camera crew competing, and competing for a million against. dollars. Yeah. It's amazing. I totally Exactly. Agree. Exactly. And I just, I, I love that too, you know, cause obviously I can't hear everyone else. But I, I loved watching it back and hearing everybody talking like, oh, I bet he'll drop. And Liana saying, I hate his face. I can't stand <laughs> it. And, you know, like Shan, Ricard, and Erica saying like, oh, he's going to go next. Like, uh, it's just 
I, I think it's very funny uh, how in life to have that much pure joy around something like that, you know, something that other people might struggle with, it makes them mad. I think that it just shows finding peace, understanding that if they truly had the peace in their minds to appreciate the experience, I don't think that they would react in that way. But it's, it's true, again, because, you know, perception is such a hard thing. They could just think I'm like pre-arc Cody, cocky, like I've got this, or am I post-arc Cody saying, no, like I'm one with myself and I'm calm, focused, and I'm just so happy to be here. Yeah. I imagine every second up there, it's just like a moment with Big Z. One long stroke. Not too long, yeah. but one long <laughs> stroke. Just every second. One more. Se- yeah. So love that. That's great. Wow. Okay. We got two last things. Let's start off. Evan, why don't you give us closing thoughts on Surf's Up, this great movie. Like we had said at the beginning, this movie, at least in my consciousness, has flown under the radar. I knew it existed. I vaguely remembered what the concept was, but my I was completely off. I didn't know it was a mockumentary. I didn't know it was nominated for Best Animated Feature. I didn't know it had such a star-studded cast. I didn't know it was this funny and good and heartfelt. What it inc- Why hasn't anyone else done this i mean i mean yeah. maybe no one else should but this is this is great bringing the mockumentary format to a family movie uh, just gives it this sheen of quality and it's so memorable i i don't know yeah. how else to describe it you really i can't put it into words like what this movie experience is like you just got to watch it it's similar to the office similar to documentary now but yeah. it's a great family movie with a heartfelt message. And I think anyone listening to this podcast will really, really enjoy it. All right. Xander, you want to give us your closing thoughts on Surf's yeah. Up? Yeah. Much to Evan's note, like, I really wish I could have been in, like, the storyboard room. What did it start out as? Like, okay, we want to do a surf movie. Let's make it penguins. Let's do it animated and let's make it mockumentary style. It's like they're throwing so many elements that you wouldn't think would work well together into one. And yet somehow it works. And it's one of those movies that you can watch so many times over. And every single time you watch it, you pick something new up again. Little things like it's so quotable too. uh, like Ivan, the fire urchin, like stepped on me. This guy was dancing on me. Look at his broken, broken, broken jaw. It's so great. <laughs> it's so good and then like you know SPEN like you were talking about and uh, the natives are penguins because they're from Pangu so they're penguins but penguins it's like, that's great. Little, like little things so many little easter eggs here and uh-huh. there uh, so that's why I've watched it about a million times and you know if I ever went back out on Survivor before I went out there I'd probably watch it again that would be my pre-race pre-survivor ritual love that yeah My closing thoughts, I don't say this about everything that we cover, but movies like this are why we created this podcast. We, as adults, don't get to appreciate animation sometimes when it is a perfectly legitimate and real form of storytelling, comedy. Anything you want to see in in a movie can be done animated, and it can be done very, very well for All ages, yes, while this has the penguins and it may be marketed at a young audience, I would show this to my mother and I think she would have a good time. We would laugh together at this. It's fun, it's funny, it's thoughtful, and it's really well put together. It doesn't feel like it was just a cheap Sony cash grab. Someone really feels like they put a lot of heart, time, and soul into this. I feel like the voice actors really connected with what could have been a very silly and goofy movie, and they took it just seriously enough to make something that I think criminally underrated but should withstand the test of time. Like, more people need to be talking about this movie, in my opinion, because when I went to go, you know, usually when we're covering things, I'll go watch some YouTube videos, and I couldn't find that many about this. And I was like, this is such a shame because this just has laugh-out-loud jokes and moments that really made me, like, think and made me be like, ah. And us talking about it made me realize new things, appreciate different things, and that's the sign of a good piece of media is when you're discussing it and you, like, have new revelations. You're like, oh, wait, I didn't even connect these two things. And so for me, this is a must-watch. Yeah. Evan, 
We like to read some news about animation in the headlines. Two dudes read news. My first bit, One Punch Man. Justin Lin, the director of Fast and Furious 9, is set to direct a live-action adaptation of One Punch Man, which we recently covered on the podcast, for Sony. Xander, have you ever watched One Punch Man? <laughs> have not. That's okay. Yeah. It's very what? obscure anime. What, what's on your cartoon watch list? Definitely, like, movies. There are just so many great animated movies out there. Like you said, it's, like, such a great medium for storytelling. Mm-hmm. Uh, Megamind's fantastic. Horton yeah. Hears a Who. Kung Fu Panda. Uh, you know, so many great messages. I'm sure there's some mm-hmm. others that I'm forgetting. Yeah, but, this um, is an obscure anime. And anytime they take an anime and make it a live action thing... It is going to be hit or miss. So I am cautiously optimistic. Love One Punch Man, but live action anime can can be a bit wonky. Nonetheless, exciting news. I'm going to watch it no matter what. So my news, not animated related, but still exciting. Because of fans memeing the movie Morbius so many times, Sony re-released the movie thinking that fans were wanting to watch it again. It was out of theaters, and they re-released it, and it flopped again. So Morbius may be the first movie to have flopped on two separate opening weekends. And in a weird shift, Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be doing something similar this fall. They're going to be doing a re-release of the movie with deleted scenes and bonus features, I guess, but in theaters. Now, back in my day, not to sound like an old man, we could get these on the DVD. And now we got to go back to the theater to get the deleted scenes? Are you kidding me? I, think I don't know how I feel about this. Digitally, yeah. You cannot. I looked it up because I said, I go, I go, I go, interesting. I go, they just released it on Blu-ray. And they go, it, it was a big deal. It, it was promised to be on the Blu-ray. And when it was released, it was not. And this is why, because they had this plan. And I don't know how I feel about it, guys. I don't love it. Um, I love Spider Man. I'm gonna probably see. It. That's the worst part is I might. I'm, probably, I'm mad about it, but I'm probably gonna go see it. Yeah, God. it's like a limited edition kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like it's for yeah. artificial demand from low supply. It's limited edition. They're they're, mm-hmm. they're trying to squeeze You're a couple so extra right. bucks, but, but they'll probably get me too. Yeah, fuck, yeah. damn it. Ah, oh, that was my big news. I was like, ah, yeah. oh, hate and love this. <laughs> Two more headlines I got for you guys. Avatar The Last Airbender announced they're doing three animated movies in the future. Avatar has kind of branched off into its own studios now, so they're going to be producing more Avatar content. We love Avatar here on this podcast, so that's really exciting. And this one, I think, will appeal to a broad fan base. There's a new Lord of the Rings movie announced. Uh, I think the release date is sometime in 2024. It's called The War of... I'm going to butcher this. The War of Rohirrim. Rohirrim. Okay. (laughs) But it's relevant um, to this podcast because it's going to be an anime. Oh, how interesting is that? Now you've caught my interest. I'm all about... Okay. I like when anything gets... If they were just doing... Lord of the Rings again, like they're just doing it again. I'd be like, man. But since it's animated, I'm a, if they're gonna do try to do something unique, I'm I'm about it. That's interesting news. I'm, I'm cautiously optimistic. I'm definitely intrigued. Yeah. Well, first off, before I do our closeout, Xander, thank you so much for coming here. This was a blast to getting to talk to you. Obviously, we're both huge Survivor fans and loved mm-hmm. watching you. And it's just great getting to talk and like nerd out with you, like about just our love and passion of this too. And so finding out you were such an animation fan really warmed our heart. You knew over the garden wall uh, on my Instagram story. I was just like, Oh, cut from the same cloth. That's like, that's like (laughs) such a badge of honor. So really thank you so much for being here. Do you have any, like anything, uh, where can people follow you? Uh, Any last words uh, before I wrap up here? Um, Instagram is really, you know, I, I try and limit the amount of time I'm spending <laughs> on my phone and then also doing a lot of work and traveling. I code develop. So like, honestly, one of the scenes that connects to me a lot is that scene where Cody just decides to make the board on his own and yeah. stay up all night. Yeah. And they got dirty heads stand tall playing. I pull so many all nighters coding. <laughs> I've been working on an app for like a, um, a year now, actually, right when I got back from Survivor. Mm-hmm. 
started coding. So yeah, hopefully I can release soon. But yeah, uh, honestly, thank you so much for having me. This was an amazing experience. And yeah, it's, I, I love being able to geek out about cartoons, especially <laughs> over the garden wall. Maybe we'll have to do another one oh, or something. Yeah. We, we do it. Oh, we watch cool. it every fall. Yeah, yeah, we'll get you on in the fall. We watch it every so fall. Good. So yeah, oh, it's too good. But yeah, th- seriously, thank you so much. This has been a blast. All right. If you want more Two Dudes, please check out our other episodes on Apple, Spotify, and also on YouTube now. Follow us at Two Dudes Watch Cartoons on both Instagram and TikTok, and Two Dudes Watch on Twitter. And of course, please rate and review us on Apple Podcast. Evan and I realized we didn't really have any rates and reviews, and we would really appreciate those. So thank you in advance for those. And you know what? Thanks for sticking around and watching this great movie with us we appreciate your time uh and that's all i got for everyone thank you we'll catch you next bye. time bye bye Woo! Two dudes watch cartoons.